Hello everyone, my name is Rich Hanna. I'm a data scientist at the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia. And with utmost gratitude to the organizers of the R Medicine Conference, it's my pleasure to talk to you today about the GG Swim package and how it could help you to make reproducible, lovely swimmer plots with ease. I am one of several people on the Cell and Gene Therapy Informatics team here at CHOP, which works as an embedded team to support clinical research. We do a lot of just about everything from clinical trial database design and management to automation, machine learning, dashboarding, and to today's topic, visualization. In managing clinical trial data, a natural output is to visualize the data in meaningful ways, such as high-level views of patient clinical courses. One of the ways to achieve this is through a swimmer plot, but first of all, what is it? I'm putting the car before the horse here, so to speak, but on the right, we have an output from the GG Swim package displaying a sample swimmer plot. Effectively, this is a horizontal bar chart where each bar represents an individual subject and contains details about the subject's course in a given period. They are comprised of three elements with different names that I'll use interchangeably, um, those being lines or segments or lanes, and points or markers, and arrows indicating continuation of those lanes. Swimmer plots are particularly useful in clinical and pharmaceutical spaces where they offer granular subject level data and easy to interpret displays of key metrics such as adverse events and durations of responses. Here's one example of swimmer plots being used in the literature. This study came out of our department and looks at a type of immunotherapy using chimeric antigen receptor T cells, also known as CAR-T. On the left is a stratified figure showing various swimmer plots that break down clinical courses of individual subjects. Statuses are indicated by segment colors, events are indicated by shapes along those segments, and the aforementioned arrows tell us whether those patients continued on to follow up. Going forward for the sample data I'm about to show, I'll be using data sets that come actually pre-packaged with GGSWIM and are loadable when you load the package. These data sets are built to resemble clinical trial data where patient data represents time series data for different disease assessment statuses with corresponding start and end times, and study and infusion events give differently formatted discrete data related to those patients, and arrow data gives singular values for patients that are indicated for continuation of their course. So using those data sets and assuming a ggplot2 101 level understanding, the simplest way to start making your plot would be with some combination of segments and points. Uh, this works pretty well except for the fact that the legend is a bit challenging to read for a few reasons. One, the labels for the different discrete categories are repeated. Uh, two, in the bottom color section under disease assessment, markers and lanes, um, statuses are mixed when these are really two different kinds of data, one being continuous, one being discrete. And this is more or less the whole crux of swimmer plot difficulties with R. We want to tackle how to manipulate the legend to tell the story that we want. So let's build upon that uh, series of code from the first slide and say that in our expanded attempt, we employ ggplot2 scale manipulators. If you're new to ggplot2, scales are an unavoidable but not an always immediate need. Essentially, scales control how data values get mapped to visual properties such as color, size, and shape that you define within those initial ggplot2 AES wrapper calls. Applying scale commands defines how data should be translated into the aesthetics that the plot will display. At the top of the code chunk on the left, I'm predefining the unique values for events and lanes with specific colors. So I can later tell these scale functions that when you see X category or label, apply Y color. The output here is actually closer to what I want, where most of the colors are uh, by my definition, and the legend is split into lanes and markers with no repeated labels. However, while lanes looks good, markers is actually devoid of color. Now, and all of the shapes are gray and only distinguishable by their shapes, which is an unintended side effect. We probably run into this at some point, but ggplot2 actually tells us why this is happening. And it's because you can only call scales of a certain type uh, once. Otherwise, the scale gets overwritten by the most recent scale call. So in the code, my markers color scale definition was overwritten by my lanes one. Now, looking at some examples of other ways we could tackle this, at our medicine 2022, Catherine Hoffman gave a wonderful presentation on exactly this, which served as much of the inspiration for GG Swim. Her past talk goes through the breakdown translating data for display, but the key thing I want to look at is on the right, um, is how she was able to leverage ggplot2's guide functionality to manipulate the ggplot2 output to make a legend closer to what we want to see. Guides work closely with scales, but are slightly different, and while scales define the how of how your data maps to visuals, Guides define what those mappings mean in the output and offer increased customization. You can think of a scale as a data to aesthetic translator and a guide as the printed dictionary of explaining that translation. And while I think this is very close to what we want, I believe we can make the code even easier and improve the output just a little bit more. 
In the legend here, all outputs are categorized under patient status, but really we could say that the intubated, non-intubated categories can be separated out from the remaining discrete events. And so other than ggplot2, the only other package that truly tackles swimmer plots is called swimplot, shown here. And while the package does make swimmer plots, it doesn't quite do it in a way that works inside of the grammar of graphics. Rather, swimplot makes its own grammar and framework that wraps ggplot2 functions. And I want to go through one last alternative approach using the ggNewScale package. Essentially, ggNewScale targets the specific error I mentioned earlier about overlapping scales and allows you to call the same scale type multiple times without overwriting previous ones. On the left, I have one call to new scale color, splitting up my two calls to scale color manual. This effectively sets what I like to think of as an anchor point, where internal to the plotting object, ggNewScale defines another color scale as a wholly separate one from the first for the next time one gets called. The legend actually looks pretty much how we want. However, this is more of an alternative approach and not one that works very harmoniously with the grammar of graphics. Because ggNewScale creates additional objects under the hood, it's extremely difficult to do any additional pro processing and work back up your ggplot layering chain, and it's not the most reproducible for our purposes. And finally, that leads us to ggswim. How can you use this and how is it any better? ggswim looks to build as much as possible off of existing ggplot2 architecture, firmly rooted in the belief that if something isn't broken, don't fix it. There is no wrapping of standard functions. Instead, each geom function is built off of existing geoms and exposes all the same parameters you're used to from ggplot2. This means that convenient things like auto-tabbing works out of the box, and objects you make with ggswim stay within the grammar of graphics and are ready for combination with any other ggplot2 functions you want to use. ggswim itself only has a few main functions. geomswim lane, which wraps geom segment methods, swim marker, which wraps geom text methods, swim arrow, which is a more specified geom segment wrapper for appending continuation arrows, and the last one, scale marker discrete, which is the crux of how we fix that legend output. With minimal additional code or, mani or manual manipulation, you have a reproducible and succinct means of creating the swimmer plot we want. So what's going on here to make this work? Well, as a refresher above, we have our discrete data sets showcasing uh, different formats for the types of glyphs we want to define. When we say glyph here, what I'm really referring to is a composite of the shapes in the graph that equivalent to their corresponding display in the legend. Here we're showing how ggswim can innately handle glyphs of varying formats, such as your standard ggplot2 shapes, emojis, or even certain font libraries. By binding these data sets together, we can more easily pass the whole thing to one geom swim marker call. And in geom swim marker, we have one new parameter that we give you called marker. This is put inside of your AES function call. And in here, we define the discrete marker events by their labels. Scale marker discrete then defines how the marker aesthetic should be interpreted by supplying the definitions for those glyphs and colors and offering our labels as the limits um, scale marker discrete has everything it needs to process those data under a new marker class. The result is we have a legend that effectively splits continuous and discrete data under separately named categories, shows glyphs and icons of varying formats and proper display, and no repeats of categories under different scale types. Now, as I mentioned uh, in the previous slide, ggswim also supports certain font libraries, uh, namely the free open source font awesome and bootstrap icon libraries. And ggswim takes care of the font orchestration via simple load function and then offers conversion functions for the corresponding font and all that remains for the user is to specify the font family and you get pretty displays. ggswim also offers several theming functions to help you make whatever swimmer plot you desire and all of these and more can be found on our package down site which I'll link to in the chat. So to wrap things up, and on behalf of CGT Informatics, thank you for listening. I hope you find the package useful, and I have some helpful links here that I can also put in the chat, and feel free to reach out with any questions. Thank you. Well, Richard, that's getting people pretty excited about getting their hands on this and trying it out. I'm curious, for some things there are clearly medical icons that make a ton of sense. For things where there isn't an existing icon, can you take a I don't know what, BMP or JPEG or something and, and create an icon that would be custom? I'm sure that you can. Um, trying to get, so 
eventually we want to put this on CRAN and we want to make sure that we're using stuff that has free and open source licensing. Yeah. Um, and part of this is that the font libraries are actually hosted within the GC, the GG Swim repository, but not something that will go to CRAN because it would explode the size limit. Um, so I targeted font awesome and bootstrap because they're established and, uh, you can kind of do the work of ease. Like you can put any font you want, as long as you make the font, it's just, uh, right. working with fonts is actually a pretty challenging whole separate topic. Yeah. So if there's anything that you find that you would want to see a certain library with a certain type of like, I forget the font, um, extension for the file type, but you want to see that, please open an issue and let me know. Um, mm -hmm. I'm happy to look into it. Yeah. I mean, there are some medical icon libraries that might make sense, but most of the ones I'm thinking of aren't open source. Uh, Jeremy asks, is there any way to jitter or deal with multiple events on the same day? Like somebody gets intubated and you start steroids, for example? Sure. Uh, I don't know if I've personally implemented that in the package yet, but if there are methods... So since it's a geom text, I forget if geom text has some way to enforce jittering through positioning. Um, it does again wrap like geom marker wraps geom text, and so it has access to all the same things that those ggplot4 okay. functions do. Uh, so things like alpha work if you want to do transparency and things like that. I do have an open issue where I want to actually dynamically have indicators attached to the lanes so that you can kind of spread the um marker space but turns out that that is actually a very complicated thing to do between um data and plot space uh orchestration and dwight barry is suggesting this might be a spot for position nudge put maybe one above the line one below the line something like that mm -hmm. and shanushka asks is there a way to click on a closely spaced section and have it pop out in a mini window to observe events on a smaller time scale, so more interactive. Um, that sounds really, really cool and really, really challenging. And I don't have a good answer right now, but I am happy to accept any PRs. Yeah. Um, interactive would be really cool. I have not actually engaged with things like you could definitely like throw this into Plotly has their, you know, uh, convert conversion function to like a G, like ggplot to plotly function. Um, but at the moment, we're the, the purpose of the package right now at point one is just to make sure that we make it so that you can put this next to whatever other ggplot stuff you want um, and target a very like singular um, goal at the moment. But I'm, I'm yeah. really excited by all the comments. Um, so I hope that we can expand on it. Yeah, I mean, I could, I would imagine the first step is producing graphics that you could publish in a medical journal that, you know, you could put out there. And, you know, my favorite examples I show folks lately is the uh, sickle cell gene therapy. I don't know if you saw those, but basically people were having flares ending up in the hospital frequently, frequently until they got their gene therapy. And then the right side of the plot was empty of events largely. Um, it's in the New England Journal about eight months ago. It's pretty slick. Okay. I'll have to keep um, take a look at that. But, you know, it is, it does raise the question, you know, why are we still, you know, in the year 2025 printing on paper and doing static when, you know, you could publish in Med Archive and have an interactive figure? Um, you know, and, and Boris asks, you know, could you have pop-ups either using Plotly or G giraffe or, you know, something like that, you mm -hmm. know, I don't know that that, you know, that seems like a whole second phase is to make it interactive for things like web publication, but I feel like it's, it's got to come eventually. The journals are kind of holding us back. Right. Yeah. Like I said, I, at the moment it's meant to be a GG plot core like extension package. And yeah. so if you want to throw it into plotly by all means, let me know if it works well. Um, I do also want to actually give a shout out to the ggplot extenders group. If there's anyone on the call who is interested in ggplot extension, um, there is a great group led by uh, Gina Reynolds, who um, yeah. heads anyone who's interested or wants to um, submit something to help with the extension community. Um, Jeremy also asks, is it reasonable to do cord flip to put the swimmer plot vertically for very long follow up? 
Uh, that is a great question. I think you should. I haven't personally tried it yet because I don't work in a space where I would probably be doing that. But I, like I said, the, the intent here is to make it so that everything in ggplot you can use with this. It's, it uses all the same layering functions. Um, so I imagine it should work, but let me know if it doesn't. And Boris asks, you know, are these readily exportable to Plotly with, and I'm assuming ggplotly would do that. Does that seem reasonable? I think so. I think ggplotly just wraps the plot, the ggplot object, and then converts it into a plotly object. That being said, I would say I have a little bit of bias that it sort of weakens your plot. Um, it's better almost always to code things using like the core plotly functions, but for convenience, it's definitely worth trying ggplotly. That's cool. Yeah, I think, you know, everybody's exciting. Um, Shanushka is um, saying hi and would, would want to connect. Um, sure. Really we, lots we of ideas does. and hopefully lots of people to offer PRs. Clearly. Yeah, absolutely. And if, with enough, you know, get enough feedback, because I actually didn't know anyone was using it. So thank you for that, Peter. But I would like to try and submit this to Crayon after I confirm that, like, it's useful enough. Yeah, we we just happen to have a very small and longitudinal study that uh, now thinking back, I'm like, oh, I really want to make a stent icon. But <laughs> <laughs> in the very beginning, I used um, a, like the hand wave emoji for when patients mm -hmm. were leaving a trial and I forgot to take it off before showing uh, my team and everyone got a real kick out of that. <laughs> yeah, uh, the one I'm thinking of this is the sickle cell paper i'll put the link in and i'm sure they made this the old-fashioned way um but uh it's the plot on severe vaso occlusive events it's pretty awesome uh but it would be amazing to be able to make this very quickly with gg swim Cool. Um, but, um, oh, yes, yes. I think I, yeah, I think I actually saw this one. <laughs> this is an example for me at some point. Yeah, that is cool. Okay. Um, so I'm going to jump over and Steve is going to take over as the new moderator. The next talk is on when, what to do when shiny packages don't fully support your idea. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, everyone.